Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Love in Reality podcast. I am your host, Ricky Valero. On today's episode, I am going to tackle the brand new season of Temptation Island. The season one premiere happened last night on the USA Network. If you just happen to miss the episode, you can catch it on Peacock right now. But what I'm going to do is each and every week, I'm going to dive into what we see, give you some of my thoughts on what goes down in each episode. But I'm very excited as Temptation Island is one of my favorite reality series. Um, in case you missed it, I sat down with Mark L. Wolberg, the host of Temptation Island. I released that episode earlier this week. Um, I had a great time chatting with him about what is ahead for season five. I think we guys, you guys are in for a real treat. Um, like I said, if you go catch that episode, um, you can watch it on YouTube. You can subscribe to the podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast, you know, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, the list goes on and on. You can check it out over, you can find any of these links, obviously head on over to the YouTube or you can click the link in the description of this podcast. Make sure to subscribe, leave me five stars, all that good mumbo jumbo you hear from all of the other podcast hosts. But let's go ahead and dive in. Let's get a little bit background on some of these couples. I'm going to give you an idea of who these who these people are. Um, first off, we have Caitlin and Hall. Um, Mark asked these two right off the bat. He said, whose idea was it to come on the show? Hall said he can cl say with clarity that this was Caitlin's idea. Now, a little bit of a backstory. They are the first couple in the history of Temptation Island to be engaged to partake on this show. So it's definitely interesting to see that. Uh, Caitlin said it was her idea. She said she's happy to be engaged, but she doesn't know, neither of them know, which is a big like question mark here of, of when that next step is going to transpire. Now, a little bit more of a backstory we find out is they've been together for eight years, but broke up after three years. And then after a year and a half of being separate, separated, the two got back together. Now, um, Mark kind of exposes the idea that these two aren't willing to kind of express how they feel towards each other. One of the things I do love about this very first bonfire is obviously first we get to know each of the couples, find out why they're here, what their goals are here. Um kind of what led them to be on this show. And then, of course, kind of ex Mark kind of gives advice and and, and suggest and, uh, you know, strongly tries to get, dig deep into their relationship to figure out what's going on between the two of them. Next up, we have a couple Vanessa and Roberto. Vanessa says their age gap, um, you know, she questions his maturity and his loyalty. And she thinks that his experience within the show will reveal that. So basically, she's brought him onto the show to reveal, can you be loyal? Can you be, um, you know, the person that she needs, I guess, that backbound? Now, Roberto agrees um, that their 10-year age gap has proved to be a struggle. But um, he's here to prove that he's mature. And he also says the world revolves around her um, and that... Uh, you know, everything that she wants has to be a certain way. He feels that he is mature, but has to continuously prove to her that. Um, uh, he's a work in progress and you're trying, uh, this is what Mark said. Mark said that, um, you know, she, Vanessa looks at Roberto as this work in progress who she's trying to mold or is it someone that you think that will be an equal provider in the relationship? Um, I love that Mark put it this way because obviously is, is Vanessa trying to make Roberta the person that she wants or is she trying to make, you know, trying to help Roberta become the other half of her relationship and, and be that person that, you know, gives and takes throughout their time together as a couple. Um, it was kind of funny. Like this was like really a strong kind of breakdown by Mark and he just kind of tore them apart from head to toe about their uh their lack of communication and then of course you bring up the entire you know the age gap and her trying to conform him into the person that maybe she wants to instead of the person that he wants to to become a better person for their relationship maricella and christopher um <laughs> maricella says they haven't gotten along together uh, for a few months and both have strong personalities and struggle with meeting in the middle 
Um, they communicate differently. Marissa, uh, Maricela says she is a wall and strong. Christopher is more open about his feelings. They suck at communicating. Um, I, again, this one, this one, if I look at the couples, this is the one that was kind of confusing to me that, um, that I just don't understand how they're, why they're together. I, I don't, I don't get why they're together. I don't understand the dynamic. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, Mark says, she, asked what she's afraid of. And Mar Maricela says she's afraid of getting hurt. Um, Christopher says, probably maybe the funniest thing I've ever heard. He said throughout his twenties, he would call him a, call himself a respectable, respectful whore. Um, I didn't know that was the thing, but, um, he, a respectful whore. I, I, okay. All right. Thanks, Christopher. Maricela mentions not wanting to, um, not wanting the constant ups and downs. Maricela, uh, hopes to learn to communicate on the show. I, this is my thing. Okay. Um, look, we all love this show for what it is. It's the drama. It's the, it's the, the sex appeal. It's the, the back and forth. It's the, it's the whole nine, right? But what in the world? Can you communicate when you're on this island with singles trying to take your man or woman? Like, how does that communication going to become stronger? I, I'm confused. I'm very, very confused at what goes down here. I don't understand how that those go coincide with each other, but we'll, we'll see, right? We'll see. Before they jump into Paris and Great, a bit, a bit, a bit of a rainstorm comes in, and Vanessa does a little bit of complaining, and Roberto looks at her and says, "You're the only one complaining," and she says, "Shut up." What a great uh, start to introduction between these two, right? Paris and Great. Um, everyone's back home getting married. They've been together for one year and eight months, and doesn't uh, see a ring or talking about moving in together. All right, let me stop you right there. A year and eight months. She made it sound like they were together for their entire lives. Like, don't get me wrong, 20 months is a long time to be together. But at the same time, it's not that long. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not. It's just really not that long. And it's incredible, incredibly weird to just see this dynamic between these two and how it, it, it unfolds early on and talk about this 20 months that they've been together. You know what I mean? She says she's always... Uh, says that he talks to her like she's dumb, which, I mean, that's kind of messed up. And, and that's part of the reason why they're here. Great says Paris gets triggered easily, and he wants to clarify that before she moves forward, Paris brings up that he cheated on her multiple times. Now, okay, let's stop here. Let's stop here. Multiple times of cheating. Um, uh, Great has che cheated on her multiple times. So let's break down this dynamic in just a few moments here. All right. So 18 months, or uh, one year and eight months they've been together. She hasn't seen a ring. She hasn't heard anything about them moving in together. And he's cheated multiple times. Where do you not see the writing on the wall here to hit the bricks? Like, cheated multiple times, 20 months in. You wonder why you're not getting a ring is because my guy has got his eyes set elsewhere. You know, I don't want to be that guy here and say, hey, the writing's on the wall, but hello. But uh, Paris speaks up. If you love me, why would you allow me to come to Temptation Island? LOL. Mark said the cheating must have been painful. Paris breaks down, says she doesn't uh, doesn't feel wanted and feels disrespected. He is the first person. Uh, but then Great says, she, um, I, I'm sorry. Paris says he is the first person that's cheated on. Uh, she's been cheated on with and actually stayed with the person. Again, I'm not saying that she doesn't have love for this man, but 20 months, she doesn't see the future dynamic with him growing from his side. Cheated on twice. I don't understand here. What are we doing here? You know what I mean? What are we doing here? I don't I don't get it at all. Greg says he hates to see her cry. Mark says we're just getting started. This is an uncomfortable journey and be vulnerable. He said he usually, uh, this is when they say goodbye, but... In a Temptation Island first, they will all stay together tonight to reconnect before the singles arrive. Um, Caitlin says that it, it scares her to hear Paul broke up with her to see other people, and now it scares her to be on the show. Hall said coming out of this experience without her would be brutal. I mean, duh. Vanessa is still complaining about her hair in the rain. Roberta says to her, uh, says to the camera, you, you're the only one complaining and whining. 
And then she complains about this entire thing. And Roberto said, everyone was cool. And she was in the corner. She said, um, he should have her back 100%. These two are fighting. Vanessa said, it's you're embarrassing me. Tells him to fuck off. Things are just going fantastic between these two. And then, of course, a little bit later, Roberto does come in and apologize to her. Um, not looking good for these two, right? Uh, Vanessa and Roberto uh, are not looking good right off the back for these two, which is kind of funny. But um, all right, look. Here we are, the introduction introduction of the singles. Look, I just want to point out right out the gate that Paris was looking and liking what she was looking at. Maricela, Maricela said she was looking to find her favorite. Christopher said he already had his eyes set on someone. For the first time in Temptation Island history, they're going to have a party where all the couples and singles mingle together. Uh, we already know this should be interesting. Um, we see Tammy sit between Christopher and Paris and say they are tempt, uh, here to tempt people. But she says she says she's always looking for love. She's also looking for love as well. She said she uh, sets the tone and let. Oh, I, I liked what she said here. You know what I mean? She likes to, you know, th when they do these kind of separate interviews with the people, they she she sits there and says, "I like to set the tone, but then I let you come, you know, come to me." You know what I mean? You know, because she says she's the boss. But I do like that. You know, she's not going to just sit there and just chase, 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 chase. You know what I mean? And I don't blame. You know what I mean? Tajik. Um, I'm gonna probably try to get pr better at pronouncing this guy's name by the end of the by the end of the season here. But uh, he hits on Paris, and she said that she's give he gave her butterflies already, um, and she feels a little scared. Um, all right. Um, we've been here for ten minutes, right? Ten minutes, and you're getting butterflies from a man that you just met. I. I have no hope for Paris and Greg, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be the bearer of bad news. I have no hope for this relationship. I foresee them breaking up before the show is even over. Um, they play Never Have I Ever. Hal is confused and is um, <laughs> confused why he's as, as he's engaged with uh, eight singles sitting there with him. Michael sits down with Caitlin to discuss their relationship. But Hall is getting drunk. Caitlin sees him and asks him what he's doing. He goes, getting himself in a lot of trouble. Um, I don't really know what the dynamic here um, with Caitlin Hall is. I really don't care, but I feel like Hall is going to be a much needed, much needed comedy presence for this uh, entire situation as he sits down with Michaela. Uh, Vanessa is looking for Roberto, who is nowhere to be found. Um, he is chatting up with some girls. She comes over and plants a hug and a massive kiss on the man. Paris says she gets super jealous and worried. Great. will fall in love with anyone that gives him attention. I don't know, Paris, like you were just smitten and had butterflies by a man like five seconds ago, but whatever. Um, Paris and Greg talk about who they've been talking to. And then, of course, argue about who they're talking about. He said he has invested everything to make things work. Clothes are starting to come off at the party. Shocker. Uh, Hall brings up Caitlin likes to flirt and likes the six pack as she's flirting with somebody with dudes with six packs, which was absolutely hilarious. Again, I love Hall. I'm very, very excited. Uh, Michaela is excited to explore this relationship with Hall. Definitely interesting because she thinks she can provide that deep aspect of a relationship he isn't getting from Caitlyn. We don't really see a deep conversation between Michaela and Hall, but for her to insinuate that she can provide something that Caitlyn can't means that conversation got a little bit deeper than what we saw, right? You know what I mean? Like something happened there. Definitely worth keeping an eye on moving forward between these two. Um... All right, moving right along. Let's see here. Christopher mentions that he has been around uh, Maricela for 740 days and uh, been been has been around Maricela for 740 days, been around her 729 days, and so only 11 days they were separate. I I don't understand. Seven, like he broke it down, folks. I mean, you saw this episode. He broke it down. 740 days. He's been around her 729, so they've only been separated for 11 days. The other guys talk about Maricela and Christopher are tied together at the hip. Christopher uh, tells, they pull each other aside. Christopher Christopher tells her no more drinks. He tries to tell him that it isn't an alcoholic beverage. Uh, the topic of family is brought up, but instead of having kids, Christopher drops a bombshell. Like this is like, if you're looking for the perfect way to end a first episode of a premiere, it's this way. The topic of family is brought up, but instead of having kids, Christopher brings up that 
that's not what Maricel wants. And before he says it, she says, no, they, she shuts it down. But then she says, whatever, share it. He brings up her wanting a girlfriend instead of kids. Girlfriend instead of kids. And then, of course, Christopher brings up how it's hard for him to compete with um, the girlfriends that are in their lives. Maricela talks to the camera away from everybody else, saying that Christopher always overshares and, and talks too much. As Christopher continues to share more and more about Maricela's relationship with other women, he's talking to these other girls about it. Maricela says to the camera that he's using her story to connect with other women and isn't sure how to feel about it. What an insane, insane end of the first episode. Um, these couples, I, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm invested. Um, one of the things that you can say right off the back about this episode was, um, you know, we got a better understanding of who these couples were. We understand what their dynamic is, why they're here. And then of course, we just got a little small sample size of what's ahead with some of these couples who we can expect to maybe dip their toes a little bit further than we would expect them to. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about what's going to go on between these two couples or four couples, but I definitely see some holes. Obviously, you know, with Hall and Michaela, that's something to keep an eye out. Paris and Great don't seem to be going so well. Maricel and Christopher are already on Rocky. Like everybody is on Rocky terms and we're on the first episode. But thank you guys so much for listening to the first episode of the Temptation Island recaps that you would be joined with me each and every week here. I'm very, very excited to chat about these. As I said, it's one of my favorite reality shows. Um, I'm, I probably got some other stuff coming up. Um, creeping into the um, creeping into the Love and Reality podcast, hoping to do some more interviews here in the near future. Um, if there's anybody that you would like me to interview, hit me up on any of the social media platforms uh, at Ricky Valera underscore. That's on TikTok. That's on Instagram. And that is on Twitter. Please, 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 please subscribe to the podcast. Hit a five star button. Um, if you can leave a review, if you'd like to kind of helps me ramp up some of this content. So thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode. And I will talk to you guys next week.